Hi, welcome to the second edition of Married to Cinema. I'm Brian. I'm Whitney. I love movies. And I don't. Yeah, so this is our second episode. We taped the first one the other night, and you'll notice if you watch that that we called it Married with Movies, and we discovered shortly after that needed to be changed because there was a potential conflict there with the name already being used. So, quick brainstorming came to Married to Cinema. Same concept, just a little rebrand. Yeah, exactly. So, that's why we called it that in the previous episode. Um, but anyway, um, here we are in the second episode. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for the suggestions. We're going to work through them, kind of switch it off between ideas of our own and the suggestions we've been given. Mm -hmm. And what we can access. Yes, there's one suggestion that we are looking to do in the near future. We're just trying to find a way to get a copy of the film. But for this episode, we're reviewing Disney's The Black Cauldron from 1985. And I love Disney, but this... This is a weird one. <laughs> Do you want to describe the plot? Ah, uh, um, hmm, okay. Um, there is a boy, and he is a pig keeper, but the pig is magical. It's some pig. It <laughs> Magic pig that can tell the future, and there's a, what is he, the horned king? I always call yeah. him the... Goblin King. Yeah, that's something else. That's something else. <laughs> that's Labyrinth. <laughs> he's the Horned King, and he wants, like, lots of magic things, not just the pig, we find out. He, like, looks for lots of magic items. But, um, yeah, he wants the pig so he can resurrect his, like, dead warrior thingies for, like, an undead army. But he doesn't say undead. What does he say? Unable. Unable to... I don't know. He spray. It's phrased super weird. But anyways, they're undead. So that does that. What do you think? Does that suffice the plot? That's essentially the plot. I mean, it's basically um, just your average Disney animated fantasy. It takes a page greatly from Sword in the Stone. And well, so what strikes me about the film is a lot of the imagery. It's got very macabre imagery to it which you don't really find in Disney films especially of that time but beyond that there weren't very many original ideas that I found well and you were saying it takes a page from Sword in the Stone I was surprised when you told me that this was actually made so long after Sword in the Stone because it, and you know you may know this or maybe not but Disney reused lots of animation frames from film to film which is why you can see those um like people have done videos where you can see like there are direct shots from the Aristocats in Robin Hood or whatever where they just kept using the same ones over and over but like recoloring and slightly changing and a lot of the stuff in this movie looks like it's directly from the Sword and the Stone particularly the animals like, the squirrel is dead on, the squirrel from The Sword and the Stone. Even the main character looks like Arthur. Yes, he does. And... It's like, let's just dye his hair a different color. And, like, fine. change his outfit slightly. Yeah. But it, I agree. So, I felt that it was pulling a lot. But, I don't know. This yeah. one had fun characters, though. Uh, Which is kind of an interesting point to make because uh, upon release, it got very mixed reviews from critics. A lot of them were criticizing it because there were no compelling characters. Uh, I won't say that's accurate. It I has don't Gergi. Know, man. Gergi's Gergi. fine. Yeah, munchings yeah. and crunchings. I too wish for munchings and crunchings throughout the day. <laughs> and Gergi, if you need a visualization of this character... Imagine if Disney decided to do an animated version of William H. Macy's character in Boogie Nights, but change everything else about the character. Like, personality-wise, different. But, image-wise, spot on. Like, do a side-by-side -side comparison he's, for yourself, you'll see it. He's weird. He has always reminded me of the dog Max from The Little Mermaid, but, like, in a teddy bear. <laughs> he's, like, always reminded me of that. And then the other character that I super loved in this is, um, what is his name? Creeper? Creeper. Yeah, he I was, he was also fun. Yeah. 
I want Gurgi and Creeper to be unlockable characters on the next Mortal Kombat. I'm just saying. And I want to make them fight. <laughs> Is that bad? I don't know. I think Michael Vick would like it. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I had to go there, didn't I? Yeah. But my first problem early on, though, is that Taryn, the the young boy, his granddad, uncle, whatever, stand-in, older male character that is taking care of him. Merlin without a beard. Yeah. Or yeah, magic. Really. Is like, go hide in this cave with the pig. Sure, sure, I'm with you. And then he cuts, he gets out this big loaf of bread and an apple. And he's like talking and packing in a bag. And this could just be because I'm a fatty. I like to eat. I don't know. But he's packing this bag, and I'm like, oh, he's going to put that whole loaf of bread in there because this is a pig and a preteen boy. And he's like, one-fifth of the loaf, also an apple. I'll come to you sometime. Like, go hide. Like, I was like, wait a minute. Like, after you fed them that weird oatmeal that wasn't oatmeal for breakfast that no one liked, including the pig. I don't know. That bothered me. <laughs> but, so they go in the woods. And there's the weird dragon scene, which I remember. So I had this on tape as a kid. And I remember watching it from time to time, but also being scared of it a little bit. And there's the scene where we first meet Gurgi, right? And then this dragon is following the pig and picks up the pig and takes it to the castle. Just as terrifying as I remember it being when I was little, just saying pretty scary. The pig, like, does some pretty scary screams. Screamy screams. Yeah. Didn't like it. (laughs) And it's, like I said, it's, it's much more menacing than other Disney films at the time. And to me, that is its, its greatest charm to it, really. Because beyond that, like, I'll, I gotta admit, like, fantasy is not really my bag. Well, oh, yeah. So, anytime you're doing any sort of fantasy movie... It's going to be a tough sell for me. And this one was very much just like I can appreciate aspects of it, but as a whole, I'm just not all that invested. It's Uh, more of a personal qualm, but... I had different, different pieces of it that I had, like, inner monologue about. But they were all... I find that they were all pretty much complaints, except, like, Creeper and (laughs) Gurgi. I mean, well, and, like, so Taryn's a little, Taryn's a little shit, for a lack of a better way to put it. Like, do you, would you agree with me? Oh, yeah. He's an irritating little snot of a kid. But, like, he is so, like, grumpy about, like, why he isn't getting what he thinks he should be getting and he should be this warrior or whatever. And then he's kind of, like, he's not mean to the pig, but he's definitely outdone with having to take care of the pig. Until he finds out it has magic powers. And then he is like walking through the woods to go find this cave they were sent to to hide with the pig. And gives this weird like bad second date line. He's like, I didn't know you were so special. And I was like, ew. (laughs) Don't go in the cave with that pig. Stay away from that pig. (laughs) I didn't like that. (laughs) This movie... Really is, uh, we've been comparing it to Sword in the Stone, and it's really, to me, it's Sword in the Stone's edgier younger brother in a My Chemical Romance t-shirt, circa 2005 Hot Topic. This is the real me. <laughs> Not a phase. All right, I'm supposed to be this great warrior. Look at my skulls. The Look at these skulls pig. of dead things. <laughs> dead things, then, like, everywhere. Okay, so they get to the, the Horned King's castle... And immediately he's, like, modeling the Cabela's catalog for next fall. He's, like, walking down the stairs with, like, this deer or and deer skin, like. And I was like, okay. But in general, I just found the whole castle scene kind of bleh. Like, not... Like, this yeah. is a PG film, right? Yeah, it's PG. In fact, this was the <laughs> first... Uh, this was the first Walt Disney animated film to receive a PG rating. And I know there's been talk about why this film was such a commercial failure. And it was something I kind of looked into to 
gain insight and also look into this film a little more. Cause I'd seen this like nine, ten years ago, but hadn't seen mm-hmm. it since, mm-hmm. didn't remember it too well. And I found out that the budget was originally reported at $21 million. Um, but then later, like, a production manager, I think he was, I want to say his name was Dan Hahn, said that it was upwards to, like, $44 million, Whoa. And it was the most expensive animated film of all time. Aren't most flops pretty expensive? <laughs> I <And> mean... <laughs> yeah, and this one only grossed, like, $21.3 million was the total uh, I looked up. Okay. It did, what was a uh, fun fact, was it, it performed... Worse than the Care Bears movie, which was put out by, like, a rival Canadian studio that same year, just a few months prior. Uh, okay. I mean, the Care Bears movie is so much better, I must say. I, Here I love I the Care am Bears movie. learning that there's such thing as a Care Bears movie. Oh, um, the Care um, Bears 2 is also awesome. Okay, well, I... Awesome. Okay. Yeah, but... Well, mm, that's the so... why it failed... <sighs> Sorry, real quick to piggyback off it. Yeah, the whole idea no, of the PG go for rating. it. Go for it. I think it's because it was a little darker and and too creepy and macabre for the young audience that it was targeted towards. So I think that had a lot to do with its financial woes. Well, in the book that it's getting its source material from. Which I'm not familiar with. Lloyd Alexander's the writer. So it's it's a novel. It's not it's like, like a, a series. Yeah, right? it's a series of books. This is one in a series. I at some point in my life have laid eyes on this book, and I think I might have read the first chapter, um, simply for reference, maybe in a college class or something. But so there's a lot. Like it, it is kind of. Um, uh, it's a big stretch to think you could get enough information in one movie, really, to have, like, a An 80 solid... to 90-minute long movie, no less. Yeah, like, there's so much there. Even if you were just going to take that one book from the series, it builds off... Of, although it tells, I believe, a different branch of the story than the majority, and this branch weaves back into the other books, it's still a lot. I mean, it's, that's a lot. Yeah, and I don't really know the source material, but it seems... So I don't know the origin or anything, but randomly in the film, like, three witches pop up who guard this cauldron, so it's like, that's the three witches from Macbeth? Is yeah. Is that what this is? It, or, like, is it just coincidence? What's going on here? I don't know. There, I Yeah, I don't know. Well, and... One of the witches, the shorter, plumper one, very much reminds me of the witch from, go figure, the sword and the stone. And the three of them in general remind me of the setup you have going for the muses and Hercules, Disney's Hercules. Mm. Uh, but like, yeah, I don't know. I, another thing that bothered me throughout this is like the Horned King and Creeper and this weird like... Is it a power struggle if you choke yourself in preparation for being choked? Because that's what Creeper does in one scene in this children's PG film. Like I said, it's very much the hot topic type movie here. <laughs> like, There's some BDSM <laughs> uh, I mean, he's obviously here, like, suffered wow. some kind of traumatic... Like, obviously, it's, like, some things have happened to Creeper. It's almost I mean, like a crazy, like, dominatrix Stockholm Syndrome scenario. The Horn feels. Because as soon as the Horn King is defeated, he's like, wait, I'm free? I'm I know, free. and he's like, oh. free. It's like, the Horn King or the Horny King, I'm not really sure, like, what fits better, but I'm like, this is weird. Like, poor Creeper. Like, did he, mm, do you, are you okay? Blink twice. Like, I don't know, like... <laughs> But I worry about Creeper. He's oh he's God. happy at the end there. Like he's just riding off, giggling. He's so ecstatic. He's the happiest anyone is experiencing this movie. So we have not talked about Princess Il Il Il, Il whatever Elani, Princess Delon at UEA. What is her name? Random generic Disney princess number thirty one. We... 
sure. The blonde. Yeah, so that's when we, when we meet her, we realize that the Horn King is collecting, like, magical items. Not necessarily, like, just the pig, right? Because she has, like, a magic bubble. Which is, like, a glowing light. And the, um, the singer dude. What do you call those people? Singer dude. Yeah, old, old man with the harp. Old man with a harp. Like the bar dude that's hanging out with them. We just watched the same movie. Do you not know what I'm talking about? I'm just drawing a blank. Cause <laughs> he I'm... has like a, a loot or something. I don't know. He's like, the witch has a crush on him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's like an old man with a harp and it hangs around his neck. Yeah, no, I know who you're talking about. Oh, okay, about. I thought the whole time you no. were like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I thought I you like... were asking for the name and I was like, I don't remember oh, this Oh, I, I don't is... care about his name, but, like, we haven't we haven't talked about him either. Like, yeah, he... I was wondering why, like, I couldn't really remember this movie too well after having seen it nine, ten years ago. But, except for, like, visual, certain visual cues I would remember. And I remember now it's because this movie is very non-memorable. Like, there's yeah. little that stands out. Like, sure, you got Creeper and you got... Gertie, but you've got better, more interesting characters in other animated films. Well, like... and I tell you what, I didn't even remember Creeper till we started watching and he showed up, and I was like, oh my god, Creeper, I remember him. And Creeper just reminds me of, like, the cousin of the, the one character, Bartok, from Anastasia. Oh, poor Bartok. It reminds me of Bartok, but just not quite as awesome as Bartok. Yeah, well, so they go, so, okay. So, the pig, they rescue the pig, and, see, even the storyline's kind of confusing looking back. So, they rescue the pig from the Horned King, and then they're yeah. taking it, this, this princess whatever, and, why are you looking at me like that? You help! Princess okay. whatever, and what's I'm the... leaving it all up to you. <laughs> and Taryn, and Mr. Harp Grandpa, Harp Grandpa... Yeah. And Gurgi. They, like, end up in this fairy world. And one of my number one cartoon pet peeves happens, which is the fairies have baby voices. Oh, right. I, the fairies. Ooh, I do not like when cartoon characters have baby voices. Like, if it's a real baby that has a real baby's voice, sure. But I don't like baby talk on cartoon characters because it's yucky. I don't know. It's gross. What did you yeah. think about the fairies? I just really had no opinion. I was like, oh, hey, it's the poor man Cinderella fairies. My biggest thing with the fairies is, like, we're halfway through this movie, and the pig is the focal point of the movie. Oh, right. And then all of a sudden the fairies are like, oh, we'll send the pig home. Don't worry about it. And they're like, thanks, fairies. We've never met before. We're going to go do some dangerous stuff. Bye-bye. And, like... They leave, and then you don't see the pig again until the last three minutes of the film. <sighs> it was a very just kind of, it felt thrown together. I think I saw it was based off of, like, two of the different uh, works by that writer, two okay. from the same series. Mm -hmm. It was an amalgamation of both, so I'm sure you can imagine just how jumbled that would make it. The big thing that I remember as a kid that was not as sad now as I remember it is Gurgi sacrificing himself into the cauldron. Yeah, because the stakes just really aren't there. You don't really yeah. feel for the characters like you should. Like, you enjoy Creeper and Gurgi because they're fun comic relief, but mm -hmm. you don't care. Well, I don't know. I just... As a kid, I remember being very upset about Gurgi. I just... I don't know. I've seen this movie twice now and both times. It's like, okay. Yeah. And it's over and it's like, alright. That ended. That was a movie. Essentially. It's, it's how Whitney feels after watching most movies I subject her to. 95% of movies that you object me, subject me to. Not object me to. I know these oh, words. 95 Got some exciting episodes in store for you all. 
basically, I'm just gonna say that this episode, this episode, this movie seemed like a lot of pieces of other movies that maybe they couldn't get to fit. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, where's all that leftover parts from and, every other successful movie? Okay, make it pretty. Go. Yeah. And it's such a big budget, and you've got so many <sighs> interesting things going for it. Like, it's the duo who had previously directed Fox and the Hound. Mm -hmm. So you're like, how can they fail? Fox and the Hound was great. Well, and, and... It's, it's really pretty, too. Like, the colors are really beautifully, like, blended. Yeah. Like, a lot of the... There's a lot about the animation that's awesome. In fact, I also read that it was the first time that Disney used computer-generated imaging as well to help refine okay. it a bit. Well, it's... it's The backgrounds are really pretty, and mm. then the people look, like, rudely drawn, like... And Gergi looks like William H. Macy in Boogie Nights. <laughs> I love that so much. She has not seen uh, Boogie Nights, but I showed her a photo, and I'm going to show her Boogie Nights soon uh, so that uh, she can get the full experience. Uh, Way more memorable characters in that <laughs> film. So, rate this movie. Let's... I'll be fair, because I really feel like it's just not for me, personally. Like, for what it is, it is a movie supposed to appeal to younger audiences, mm -hmm. and I'll give it... I'll give it a six because I don't feel any like direct animosity. It just does absolutely nothing for me. I can't give it a six because I gave Goblin whatever. What's it called? Troll two. Troll two. You gave that a five. <laughs> I gave that a five. I would watch that two more times before I watch this again. Um, I think. Hey. <laughs> I think I could give this uh, a two because it was pretty, and it is Disney, and I love Disney usually. And I feel like for people who are into fantasy and Disney and these kinds of movies, I, there is something there. I know a lot of people who love it. Yeah, but I'm into the fantasy and movies. It, so the person who suggested Disney. it is a huge fan of it. She recently saw it, and that's why she wanted us to do it. Wow. So, sorry, we didn't feel the same. Well, but, but we, you know, there were some good points. So. Yeah, there were good aspects. And it's, it's kind of fun how they have John Huston, the legend himself, do the prologue narration. John Huston, of course, was the filmmaker who directed Maltese Falcon with Humphrey Bogart. I knew that. That's what I'm here for. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he just shows up and does random stuff. So it's like, oh, John Huston. Why? Mm, I don't know. Maybe he, he thought it, maybe he thought it was going to be really successful. Oh no, he doesn't care about that. You could get John Huston oh. or anything. Like what was it? There was there was some movie I saw that John Huston popped up in that was just so bad. Oh. Was it was he in Casino Royale the uh, the sixties one or am I just thinking of Orson Welles because they both like direct great films but show up in trash I, I, I get those two mixed up sometimes I because of that I don't know the answer to these questions I I know it's more rhetorical to me okay the I was saying I don't or to our subscribers yeah and viewers fair. yeah you please know? if if you know what bad movies John Huston popped <laughs> up in please let us know thank or I you will look it up for whoever what what's the Name of your friend's channel that identified what movie I was talking about in our last video. Oh, yeah. Horror Hound Hotel, my buddy Jay. Thank you to Shout that. Shout out to Horror Hound Hotel for figuring yeah. out exactly what I was talking about. There will yeah. be many moments when you guys can figure out what the hell I'm yeah. trying to talk about. So. Yeah. I think he just <laughs> changed his channel's name to the Jay Wall channel uh, or something. Sure. I think I saw that today. But anyway, thank you, Jay. And also, Jay, thank you for the possession suggestion. I've been wanting to see that mm -hmm. for a while. Just need to find it. All right. It'll be an exciting one, though, so, uh, from what I hear. Let's just yeah. knock the nail on this coffin and be done with this one. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for tuning in. Um, like, subscribe. Mm -hmm. Married Put suggestions. Cinema. Uh, suggestions in the comments. Suggestions to us. Yeah. We'll try to get to them. We've been working with what we got so far, so yeah, thank you. Plenty of ideas and plenty of time, so like and subscribe to Married Cinema. That is the official name to our channel. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.